You have common sense if you notice there's a world around to not. If you are thinking you can do whatever you want to do, there is only one thing that I know is true about existence. You may think that it's common, it's not so common sense that we're dealing with. Oh, hello there. Hi. Welcome in, everybody. I am Lop. This is Miss Sky. Up, it's up. season three, episode 15. We've only got five episodes left of this. Do we really? That's we it? do. And then we're gone forever. That's not true. Don't <laughs> listen to her, folks. We're planning on a season four. <laughs> What's great is our last episode of season four is going to be 420. Oh, that is going to be awesome. Yeah. Maybe so we, might we have to do should. something special for that one. I was going to say, we should do something totally special for that day. Yeah. 100%. You have to. You have to. Sky. Yeah. Anonymous writes. Oh, boy. My boyfriend bought Yo. us plane tickets to Mexico Aww. for our honeymoon. <laughs> this would be nice if he had proposed. And if we'd been dating for longer than two weeks. Oh. <laughs> and that just, that just makes me think about this show that my sister's been watching called Love is Blind. It's a big popular show out right now. And yeah. it's where these people have to like get to know each other through these like little pods where they can't see each other. They can just talk. Mm, yeah. But I, after, like, they're only, they're only there for, like, a couple weeks or so. And then they have to, like, either propose and get married to these people or, like, leave, be off the show or something. Yeah. I don't know exactly how it works. I'm sure I'm butchering the, the show. <laughs> but from what I've noticed, people are talking about, they're telling each other they love them and all this stuff after just, like, a few weeks. Does that seem odd to you? Yeah, a little. Okay, so I've known people who are still married to this day that literally, like, the first connection that they met, they were like, uh, you're just the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Like, and it was just, like, a thing. Like, and they got married, like, within, like, a month. Like, I've known people who have done that. And they are, like, a really good fucking couple. Like, I'm like, all right, like, good on you. But... I just don't know There's... how you know that you love somebody that quickly. You don't. You may well, think you do. Here's the thing. It just, it depends on the person itself. Because if you know who you are as a person and you know what love is to you and your morals and what your definition of love is, as far as like you loving yourself and being able to expend that to everyone else around you, then yeah, sure, go for it. But if you're someone who's just like has this romanticized like thought of what love is and think that that's what love is and you're just like i love you then no you're a fucking dumbass and you're going to hit rock bottom I and think, be divorced within a week i think either way you're a dumbass because <laughs> you can't know you don't know somebody in two or three weeks you just don't you may think you do but you genuinely don't think about when we met sky the first day mm -hmm. me and you met think about three mm -hmm. weeks in to to us knowing each other <laughs> Well, technically, the first day that we met, you pretty much said that we were soulmates. Well, so <laughs> but that was clearly a joke. We, it, was, it was a joke. Um, but that's actually kind of funny. Though. But think about that, though. <laughs> you didn't know anything about me, and I didn't know anything about you in three weeks. Yeah, granted, we're just friends, but like, we still we talked every day. We talked a lot and got to know mm -hmm. each other. We didn't know anything about each other after just two or mm -hmm. three weeks. And we talked a lot. Yeah. So. We still don't know, like. Yeah, much but. About, let's see, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. So it is, it is literally almost damn near impossible to know every little intricate aspect of another human being. It's, it's impossible. You can't. Well, I agree. Not even that person remembers like, or in, like, recounts, like, things that have happened and things pop up randomly, you know? Oh, yeah, I remember I did this once a long time ago. And it may be something that you may disagree with, but you could have been married to this person, like, 20 years from now. And then, boom, they say something. You're like, whoa, what? <laughs> Even if you meet somebody in, like, August, right? August 1st, uh -huh. you meet them, 
right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. August, September, October, everything's amazing. You, mm -hmm. you think that you're in love with this person. Mm -hmm. And then December comes and you find out there's some kind of Christmas wackadoodle person that, <laughs> that their whole life is, goes like insane during Christmas time or something. You know what I mean? They just lose their mind over Christmas. But see, okay. You that didn't right know there. that. You know what that I mean? That right there. But see, that's what I said. There's a difference between the romanticized word that people think love is versus what love actually is. Because when you love somebody, it's without condition. It's without any, without judgment. It's without anything. It's just pure love. Right, and you can't know that in two weeks is what I'm trying to say. I understand that. But also to those people who think that they do know that also need to realize that if that were to happen, you don't know what the fuck love is at that point. That's not love right. then. You just had just. No, I agree. It was just a me. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Like, it's me. <laughs> like, hey, like, you spark my interest. Like, let's see where this goes kind of thing. I feel like dating is. the people that do that, that, like, feel like they fall in love in the first, like, two weeks are the same people that would, like, propose at somebody else's wedding. Yeah. Don't do that, oh, folks. Don't, don't ever. Do don't don't not even wedding, just an event. Anybody else's event. Just don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Even I mean, if you think unless, they're going to be fine with it. You know what unless, I mean? Unless unless and I know like cuz people have done this like the people who are hosting the event gave you the idea to do it and right. wanted to incorporate right. Right. it. Right. Now yeah, if they're involved fine. in it and stuff. But even then don't ask though. Yeah, don't ask. Like if they're saying, if they go up to them and say, "Can I propose on your wedding day?" Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, that's that's just. I I never want to get married, <laughs> but even that pisses me off. <laughs> you know? this has Somebody else's to big do event, with me, but... and then you have to get up and make a big announcement or something <laughs> about your your life. Yeah, feel the spotlight. <laughs> From people yeah I, I just i don't get it i don't know why are people that desperate for attention yeah they are i know people who do it just purposely they just want to be the center they just want to be on top which i i just don't understand <laughs> i'm the opposite i want to be so far in the fucking shadows that you didn't even realize i was at your event <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm like the definition of a wallflower. Like I just don't want to be up in. I'm with you. Like I've been, thing. I've been a groomsman in several weddings now, and I'm always the quietest, most unheard groomsman <laughs> during the entire <laughs> wedding. Like you barely know I'm even there. <laughs> I know every time I go to a wedding that that I'm in. And I feel bad because, like, a lot of my friends, like, I know, like, they, they think that I want to be involved. And it's not like I don't want to be there to support them or anything. Like, hey, yeah, no, I'm all for it. Like, let's have fun. Let's celebrate. Cool. But I just have, I just have a certain amount of social time that I can spend around people before I kind of just be like, I, I need, I'm an introvert. I just need my space. I need to be by myself and do my things and just focus and concentrate on other things and be in my own little world. Yeah. <laughs> like, that makes I'm, me... Go ahead. I was going to say, if I'm around too many other people, I feel like I absorb a lot of, like, what they are and, like, what they like and what they're doing. And I don't like that. I like, like, I feel like I lose a little bit of myself. So yeah. I just need to get away from people. It's too much energy around me. <laughs> that makes me want to talk about the difference between... Because uh, that's your social battery is what that is. Yeah, my That's social, your social battery, battery is just mm -hmm. running, running out. Yeah. And I, I think it's funny to me because people will get really upset about upset it. About, well, not even that, but what I'm about to say, they'll, they'll, they'll get really upset about when your, your social bedtime versus your real bedtime. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm going to bed, and then you see me on Twitter or TikTok sending things or posting things or something. Like a half hour later, that I'm still I've still gone to bed. I'm that that's not a like my social battery is done. When I say I'm going to bed, that's it. That's my social battery. There's mm -hmm. still time for me to lay and reflect and scroll my phone and do all my stuff 
while I drift off to sleep or whatever. Exactly. So there's a big Which, difference between social battery and, or, you know, your, your social bedtime versus your real bedtime. Yeah. Say. And, like, I get that. Like, because, like, at the end of the night, like, there's so many things that I want to do before I get into bed. Like, I need to take a shower or I need to wash my face, got to brush my teeth, got to, like, make sure, like, everything's set for the next day. Like, I kind of go through a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day. Well, yeah, I feel like everybody kind of has their own little rituals, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, when I get into bed, like, then I kind of, like, I grab my phone, see if there's anything I need to, like, look through. So, like, I'll go through my socials and then I'll, like, I'll shut it off. And there was this one day that somebody hit me up and they were like, go to bed. You said you were going to bed like an hour ago. And I was like, I, I, I'm I, going to bed. Like, that's where I'm sitting right the fuck now. Like, what is, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> like, just leave me alone. I immediately was just like. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you again. Bye. Oh, like, that's the quickest <laughs> way to get me to stop talking to you ever. Yeah. Just being <laughs> impatient with me and being uh what clingy. Like I'm yeah. done. I'm out. I'm mm -hmm. out. The first sign of that, I'm gone. <laughs> Stage five clinger. Yeah. Yeah. I just I can't. Like I'm and just that's that's not, I'm not even talking just I'm talking friendships even. Yeah, anything. I can't. Not do just it. relationships or anything. Friendships. If you're if you're clingy as a friend, I'm out. Yeah, you know I, can't, I just I can't, can't do it. I need me time. I um, had a I had a friend that was very much like I want to know every little aspect of your life. So he was like, "What's going on with this? What's going on with that? What about this? What about that? What about this?" And I'm just like, "I can't keep up with you." Oh my! I also goodness. don't care. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like these aspects of my life like mean nothing. Like, can we just talk about like, hey, let's talk about that cloud over there? Like, I feel like that's more entertaining than me working with fucking Stacy, who's a cunt. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's not. I don't know. It's it's. I think people are getting more. Uh, I should say, getting less clingy these days. People are getting more antisocial. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Because yeah. so many things are done through the internet and people are realizing you can't leave your house without spending 50 bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anywhere. Whether it's gasoline or you're going to the grocery store or you're going to a movie or you're going to wherever. Which, honestly, I feel like is like a good thing if you think about it. Because it kind of makes people stop using the materialistic bullshit around the world and like open up their eyes. Like the whole stop and smell the roses kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Instead of being so self-absorbed in like, oh, let's go pay like this massive amount of money to go do this thing. You could still have a lot of fun with the people around you by doing things that don't cost that much. Right. It's just I feel like people just are scared to do that because then they would have to actually converse. Yeah. <laughs> What's a conversation? It's sad that that's what it takes, though, is us being so broke that we can't as a society that we can't even afford to go out and be social. I know. That's martial law in itself right there. They're like, we're not going <laughs> to declare martial law. We're just going to make it to where you can't go do anything. And blame I, it on you for not being able to afford yeah, like, aw, the inflation that we made. <laughs> you know? Talk about control, man. Oh, it's... it's oh, but you know, they have our best interest. Nobody yeah. has your best interest. I can tell you that <laughs> right now. No, actually, none of the people in the government... You're, me, Sky, your parents, nobody loves you. It's just stop <laughs> even trying. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves you. We're all gonna die. I'm gonna die. You're gonna Everybody's die. Gonna die. Everyone's gonna die. Everyone's gonna die. It was trippy. But no, you know what's funny about that is literally today on my way back home from the store, somebody was on the radio and they said something about like something about the political candidates. And I was just like, Talking to the radio, does anybody else do that or is that just a me thing? But I talk to the radio sometimes. I've had people tell like, us that they talk to us when we're doing this podcast. That's that they, true. That is true. Loud. I don't feel so bad anymore. Right. <laughs> but I asked, I literally was just like, what do you mean? I was like, if you ever want me to get behind a political candidate, give me a political candidate who takes every one of their paychecks and puts it back to the people. Mm -hmm. Gives it back to their community that they're fucking fighting for. Right. You show me that political candidate, and then I will actually believe in politics. Until then, they could all go fuck themselves. Every single one of them. I don't believe a single one of them. They're all dirty. They're all trashy. Yeah, no. There's, there's no, there's no such thing as a, 
Like they have politician. zero. <laughs> no, they have zero of our best interests. Zero I of our best I saw a TikTok interests. earlier today, actually, that really, it really hit. And it was this girl just sitting in her car and she was saying, it's us. It's always been us. We're the ones that have to fix this. It's always mm-hmm. been the millennials and the, the, what is it, Gen Z, the ones after us? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, the, the, they've always, it's always been, we're going to have to fix it because we were, we were handed a terrible economy, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it just got ruined. And a lot of the older people will say, well, you just don't want to work or, you know, you, it's your fault. You're lazy. You're this, the brainwashing you're too. Is and, just... and that's not what it is. I, no. I've been seeing a lot of people struggling with, you know, being able to afford houses, people with good jobs. Yeah. Being able to afford houses in, yeah. in places that they don't feel like they're going to get robbed. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, good neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods. And it's crazy to me. But that TikTok just really, like, it really kind of just got my, got me. Attention. Uh, yeah. Well, it just like made me a little angry, you know? <laughs> And that's what I think is happening right now is a lot of people are starting to see this. And I know, I know it sounds, it's going to sound terrible when I say it this way, because a lot of people are in the midst of it. And people got to remember, I grew up this, the same way that you guys did. But I feel like a lot of the stuff that has been happening, it, it, especially within the past like decade or so with all these movements and all these hate things and all this violence and all this craziness and all this she said he said whatever the case may be all this race i feel like it had to happen because where we grew up it was so buried in the shadows it was like tasteless rumor like uh humor for people to like do these little jokes behind closed doors you know what i mean Mm -hmm. now that it's out in the open it's just like all right this is this is the truth this is everything for everybody to see Let's fucking fix some shit and see what we can do, but not take it to the extreme. And I think people broke because they were they were so brainwashed and hidden from like sheltered from what was really happening that it broke them. They went crazy and they kind of went to the extreme. And that's how you got these extremists. It's not that crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm saying this because I grew up like this. I grew up as a female Hispanic getting fucked over again and again and again my whole entire life. So I get it. I have gotten God knows how much bullshit in my life. It's not that serious. I'm still here persevering by myself, not allowing society to judge or dictate what I do. And everybody else can do the same thing. It's just, what are you willing to give up to get there? What are you willing to sacrifice to move yourself? Well, I think that's what people are angry about is we shouldn't have to sacrifice our whole lives, work our whole lives. Correct. To survive. Just to survive. We shouldn't. And I think that's what is going to open up a lot of a lot more eyes of seeing the things that we have been sacrificing aren't the things that we are being told that we need to sacrifice. I'm not sure I follow, but. <laughs> so like people are telling us like we need to sacrifice like our happiness with going out and doing all these other things because we can't afford things. But that's not the stuff that we need to sacrifice. The, the, the things that we need to sacrifice are. Hold on. Well, no, I, I, I think I get what you're saying. We just need to prioritize what we're sacrificing and what we're not sacrificing. But the problem yeah. is everybody is angry that they have to sacrifice over things that aren't our fault. Yeah. Yes. And that's what I mean. Like, those are the things that we don't, we shouldn't. And I think people are starting to see that. I think people, a lot of people are starting to see that. Yeah. It's just, we have to stop being against each other. All of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know this sounds like a cliche movie reference or something, but until we all come together, nothing's going to get fixed. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm talking males and females, uh, all the races, ethnicities, everybody getting on the same team, realizing we're on the same team, and Mm -hmm. stop fighting each other. Mm -hmm. You know what's so funny, too? And I I, I say this all the time. Why is it that we are 
fighting so hard for equality, but at the same time, we are fighting so hard to be separated. Oh, I know. I know. Like, I want to be called this, 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 and this. Okay, so you want your own separate little group. Yes. Okay, but we want equality. Yes, that makes no sense. Like, yeah. it's your. Are you're we contradicting equal? Yourself. Are we the same? Are we all human race or are we white, black, Mexican, Indian, Asian? What Male, are we? You know, LGBT, like, all of it. Like, all of it. It, it, it. None of that matters. Like, think about animals, dogs. Uh, dogs are a whole fucking species. You don't go to a dog pound or a dog park and see all of the do- all the German shepherds are on one side, all of the poodles are on one side, right. all of the pugs are on. They're all playing with each other. They're like, you got a ball, I got a ball. You got an ass that I can sniff, I got an ass you can sniff. Right. Like they don't care. <laughs> like, why are we the only species that gives a shit about everybody else around us and everything else that's happening? Like based upon what they look like. I don't know. I'll it's never so understand stupid. it. Or their preferences and what they like to do. Like, it's so stupid. Who cares? I'll never understand it. People, enjoy your fucking lives. Your own lives. The best you fucking can within the constraints of your own little fucking world. Yeah. <laughs> and stop just trying well, to and control also everybody. Stop <laughs> speaking and being offended for other, other people. people. Oh, my God. Right. Can oh we my talk God. about that for a second? Everybody's like, that's offensive. I'm like, to who? To you? I, I hate it when people look at me and they're like, isn't that offensive when you see something like that? Speaking of like something that's a Hispanic thing. And I'm like, why would I be offended by somebody who is trying to literally like move my culture out there? Like put my culture out there. Yeah. Why am I mad about that? I don't care. Like th- it's a free world for everybody to experience everything together. Hey, take it. I don't care. It's not killing me. Mm-hmm. It's not hurting me. If it's helping them, fucking great. I'm I'm so happy for them. What I it's, it's misery. I think it's like they thought of it first, and I didn't think of it, so it's not fair. So I'm gonna make sure that they can't have it, so that because I don't have it. Yeah, but I I, I I think it's people. They they go out there looking for things to be offended by. People are looking <laughs> daily for things to be offended by. And when they don't find anything, they're like, well, I got to be offended for this person. You don't. No. I'm here to tell you right now, you don't. You Let don't. them be offended for themselves. And if mm-hmm. they're not offended, then guess what? You shouldn't be either. Yeah. Does that make any sense to anybody listening out there in the world? <laughs> because it seems so simple to me. It seems so easy to solve so many of our problems if we would all just get our heads out of our asses. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, though. I don't like it's I think it's going to happen in a bigger scale than we think. But I still think there's going to be some aspects. There's, there, the there's going to have to be a big catastrophic level thing happen to bring people together. I think it's in the midst of happening. I it just could be. feel like I just feel like it's just in little sections all over the world and different things like all of these like natural disasters and all these volcano eruptions and all these wars and all these things that are happening and all these protests and all these I feel like everything is kind of happening in little pockets and it's it's like a like a, a soup that's about to boil over like water like it's a boiling pot right now mm-hmm. and I feel like everything is just about to just poof, just <laughs> Explode. <laughs> Speaking of exploding, uh, something just a PSA, guys. Buy a plunger before you think you need one. <laughs> oh no! What did you do? I did nothing. This was just a simple thought that I had. Was how you know you don't. A lot of times you won't buy things until you it's too late, till you need something. Yeah. And I just thought about that. Like, what are some things that are like that that you can. So you think you, you need batteries is another one. I say that to you all the time. I was just like, do you have like this prepared thing? You're like, ah, I'll get it when I get it. I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, yeah. I do as I say, not as I do, guys. This is. But what are some things? What are, what are, are there any off the top water. of your head you can think of? that water. Non-perishable items, foods, um, first aid kits, all of the stuff. Things Flashlights. To help. Flashlight, batteries, matches, candles. So many things. Yeah. Blankets. Just, yeah, but I feel like you buy blankets. But no, not, not uh, like if you have guests coming over 
and they, mm. they're staying, you need a blanket mm-hmm. that you didn't think mm-hmm. you'd have. Because I used to just buy what I needed for me when I would move into a place. Mm-hmm. Now that I have a house with a spare bedroom and people can come and visit, family can come and visit and stay and whatnot, I'm like, I need to buy all the things for to be a host room. for this yeah. room. This room needs blankets. It needs lights. It needs, <laughs> you know, whatever. You just What you just said just, like, gave me another, like, con or a pro for me not wanting to ever own a fucking house. I don't have to host shit. <laughs> well, I don't. You don't One have of, to, but I if know, you have like still. family or anybody that, that comes to visit you that you want to come and visit you, yeah, then... but that's what I mean. I don't think I would ever want to do that ever in my house. I don't want people anywhere. You may never near. want to, but sometimes I think you will, just out of like the goodness of your heart. Nah, uh, I but, don't have a couch. That's about it. But yeah, I got to thinking. A plunger is one of those things that. You don't think about until it's needed. Yeah. Yeah. I can I, yeah. I feel like a lot of tools are like that tool. You like you don't you don't mm, realize you're yeah. gonna need like glue, a hammer, tape, a glue, yeah, a measuring tape, a level. Like you don't realize you're like, oh, I gotta go to fucking Home Depot all over again. Okay. <laughs> That's why people don't get things done because they'll have one thing that they need to do that something like I could have an entire project to do, but if I'm missing one tool, be say I need a a certain type of uh, sandpaper for this mm-hmm. or whatever. Say so I'm doing a wood project. I need a certain type of sandpaper. Mm-hmm. I could have everything but the sandpaper, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that project because I don't have the sandpaper. <laughs> I'm going to instead of. I'm gonna just put it off until I have everything to do. Every it. every little piece of it. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, I feel so bad for my kid. I'm looking at it right now. So he's gotten this crystal set um for christmas and if you grow crystals in this little thing but nobody read it they just gave it to him and they were just like here you go you guys figure it out you need a pot mm-hmm. you need these like all of these intricate things because you gotta cook it you gotta heat it to a certain time you need a beaker you need i'm like what the fuck so, <laughs> and my kid he's like i want to grow these crystals and i'm like this is this the, the kit is probably five dollars but i gotta spend another 200 just to get all the shit that right. it needs and I've, I've slowly... never, I've never thought schools should do that. With that was in school. No, that I know. I'm just school. saying schools in general shouldn't. Oh yeah. They, they'll like give these kids projects and stuff that they got to do, and it's like they have to go and buy all these things because some schools I don't think will pay for it. No, some schools can't provide for like public schools. A lot or of like, public schools, but can't it's afford required it. to do it. Mm-hmm. Which makes no sense to me. Yeah. That's another reason why I wanted to pull my kid out because they were making me waste so much money. They made me buy things for other kids in the class. Yeah, that's and bonkers. I I understand. Like not everybody I live in I live in a neighborhood that not everybody can afford all these things. I get that. But at the same time, like they didn't even ex- they didn't say that. They mm. they just were just like we need 3 of these, 3 of these, so like 3 of each. So everybody is being told 3 of each, right? And I'm just like, okay. I'm like, well, maybe it's because they're kids and they lose things and they break things. And at the end of the year, I'm seeing other people like bring stuff back to my kid. And I'm just like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And I asked and like the teacher's like, oh, no, we just we disperse all of the items to the other kids in case their parents couldn't do it. I'm like, that bitch's parent. She's riding on a Rolls Royce. What you mean? She couldn't fucking afford it. Like, what do you mean? Well, that's the, that's the people that just take advantage of it. Exactly. And I'm like, that's where I, I have the problem. I have no problems helping. I have never in my life. I will give literally the clothes off of my back to somebody. I used to be the kid that, like, would pass a blind man and would wish I could take my eyes out and give it to them so they could see the world. Because I'm a psychopath. But I like to give. I can't help it. It's just being empathetic. Being a it's, it's good human person. <laughs> human yeah. so i just i don't i can't i can't support the other people that are like that so it was another huge reason why i took my kid out because i was just like this school in this district which mind you i just found out they just went through like their fourth superintendent or some shit like they're getting fired like off the rip so i'm so glad i took my kid out of that school let me ask you a question <laughs> did that school do participation trophies yes I'm Another reason why glad I took, it out. You took that child out. Another reason why I took my kid because he came home with that. one of those. 
he came home with a certificate, was so happy. And I was like, oh, what did you place? He goes, what do you mean? And I was like, Were you, did you win? And he goes, no. And I was like, uh, so what's the certificate? He goes, because I did a good job. Oh, <laughs> So what's happening with that is it's uh, and people make fun of it all the time and and whatnot. But what's happening is people these these kids are getting this this undeserved self, uh, this undeserved entitlement mm -hmm. that they deserve a an award just for doing something, just for doing and what they're therefore to do. they're getting this undeserved sense of their better at something than they are they deserve more uh what's the word i'm looking for they deserve more attention basically they deserve more accountability yeah than they actually do you yeah know what i mean say it's like the kids that did the group projects mm -hmm. in school remember those you'd always have the one kid that would just do everything and then you'd have the one that wouldn't even show up yep and it was all so, but that one that wouldn't show up would still get the same grade as the, and I always hated that. Yeah. Because like now this one is just basically riding off of you, like off mm -hmm. of life. And that is, and that's not doing anything. That's not helping the child. Like, I hope you people realize. That's what I'm not saying. They're doing the more harm to this child because when they get yeah. older and they have to face real life and realize they aren't as the king of everything or queen of everything that they do. It's They're not just, the best at everything that they do, even though they've got a bookshelf full of trophies that they quote unquote earned just by being at a place. Yeah. And I tell my kid all the time, like I, I always say to him, I'm like, let's say that this participation award is the for you just trying, because I'm actually I'm glad that you just tried and I'm proud of that. But when you try, you're trying to. You're trying to get to the end game and not to give up. Well, so they, that's the point yeah. that I I make with him at this point because he's like that. Oh, and he already got that. And I don't I don't like to break like burst his bubble not all the time. Right, I <laughs> so, get it, I get that, but, but like, I also think that it needs it's it's a requirement. I think oh, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. kids no, should I mean, experience loss because exactly. they have to learn how to cope with losing because exactly. they're not going to win every single thing they do in life. Exactly. Like, well, because you know, let me finish. But like I said, like. What I say to him after that is like, now you have a goal to shoot for, shoot mm -hmm. for being first, shoot for being in the top three, shoot for. And that's what I always tell him, like, always shoot for a goal. Never be upset that you lose. Never be upset that you didn't get the top. I'm glad that you tried. Cool that you got an award for trying. However, the more the better reward is getting to that place. Where yeah. you need to be. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm always telling him, like, whatever you're doing now, great. I'm happy that you're doing it because you don't want to discourage them from not doing anything, which I totally understand. But what they're doing is they're just leaving it there. They're just like, bam, trying is all you need to do. That's it. Life is try. Try good. You I, do tried. Good. I tried. I tried. I gave tried. up. I, I gave tried. up now. I tried. At least I tried. Exactly. At least I tried. And that's what I that's what I don't like. That's where it needs that that separation. Okay, great. Everybody tried. Now let's see who are the winners. Who are the ones who tried more than the other ones? Who are the ones who went above and beyond everybody else? Mm -hmm. And that's what I tell him. Like, don't just stop. So right now he's he's on he's on a Fortnite kick. He started at the very bottom. Now he's plat something. And he's just like, he told me earlier, he was like, we're gonna be in plat lobbies. Are you sure you're gonna be okay? Mm -hmm. I was like, this mother. We'll be fine. Run the game. <laughs> Just run the game. But he he tried and he kept going and he kept pushing himself mm -hmm. because I told him that. And I think a lot of people don't do that. They just give up and he doesn't get upset. And he's freaking eight. Yeah. He doesn't get upset at the game. He doesn't get upset when he loses. He's just, oh man, all right, do it again. He he learns from it. And people don't do that anymore because yeah. of these stupid participation awards. When they get to the real world and then you go to work and their boss is like, this is inadequate work. They're like, but where's my award? I should still get a bonus. But my I mom tried. said it's a bonus. Yeah. No, you, no, it's not, it's not how that works, man. You're going to get fired. And people, <laughs> people use the argument, oh, we're just raising a bunch of sissies, a bunch of wimps, you know. And that's, I mean, in layman's Neanderthal terms, sure, yeah, that's what, that's what we're doing. But if you actually break it down, you can't blame the kid. 
No. You can't. You can't blame the kid that, that comes into work and is just lazy and doesn't do anything because they've been told their whole life if they just show up, that's good enough. Yeah, just show up. All you got to do is just show up in life. Just show up in life. No, you got to you got to fucking cut the trees. You got to get the water. You got to build the path. You got to do the stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not just showing up. Then we are just floppy fish on a fish in a fucking deck. Like that's it. Yeah. Do the work. There's 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 steps that people need to continuously take in life. It's growth. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a forward motion. And I think people just reach a level and they're like, "Okay, I'm just going to be a slug." <laughs> I yeah. just want to slug it for the rest of my life. Which everybody does, right? Like, Which who doesn't everybody want to just be able to be yeah. a burrito on the daily? <laughs> for real. But you got to get to that point. And it's, when do you want to start? I think that's the question people want, need to ask themselves. When are you going to start? When are you going to start? Doesn't matter what it is. Just when are you going to start to do something to just go? Well, and so how, do they, become how do they expect to teach children, though, how to cope with loss, how to handle loss? respectfully and in a mature way and, yeah if and they my, never lose like okay so when we were watching the ufc fights the other day i told you like after that fight these guys are wailing on, it wasn't in the ufc fights it was some fights i don't remember what we were watching but they were wailing on each other like bloody ripping each other apart like at the end of it they're hugging covered in blood just like laughing shaking each other's hands that right there are two people who have never once in their life have received a participation award. Oh, for sure. They understand what competition is. They understand how to get to the level of where they are. They understand the loss and the gains that they need to go through in order to get there. And at the end of the day, they also understand, hey, this was just for pure entertainment for what we love to do. And Mm -hmm. they can respect each other and walk away and still be human. Yeah, I... That... Right there is what I love so much about that. Yeah, I feel like the the respect aspect has, has been lost mm-hmm. on the younger generation. I feel that I, us millennials, and I'm sure I'm biased because I'm a millennial, but us millennials, I feel like we were taught manners. We were taught respect, and we were taught how to converse and not be socially awkward with adults. We also didn't have a lot of the internet stuff right. and like until really late into our lives. Right. So we we kind of got had the best little, of both worlds. Really. We did. We got the best of both worlds. And I again like it's like you said, we can't really blame these young the younger generations or get mad at them because they're just born with everything at their fingertips but not taught how right. to use it. Not taught the proper ways of what it could do, the good there. And they're just seeing nothing but yeah. the bad. No, shit all I, around. I absolutely give you all the praise in the world for taking your kid into homeschooling because it has not been easy, but thank uh, well, you. I know, but he's going to be so much better off than from the stories I've heard about the school that he was in, you know, how they handle things and how they, they approach things and stuff. I, I personally, and this is just a personal opinion. Everybody, if you don't like it, <laughs> I don't care, <laughs> but I think he's going to be much better off not being in the public school system these days. Thank you. Yeah. And it's, it's sad because I went to the same school. I went to the same school and it, it was like night and day and not even night and day. It was like night and fucking purgatory. It was just insanity. I, mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. I was like, this is like the. It was one day where he left his his lunchbox in the building and I went back to the teacher like they were literally just I just picked them up from line like they could go right back into the building. And I said, oh, hey, he still has food in his lunchbox and he left it in the in the school. Can he go run and can we can we go get it? No, we can't go back into the building anymore after the building shut down. What do you mean it's shut down? There's people still in the building. We're outside now, so we can't go back in. (laughs) Okay, but there's food that will go bad in that lunchbox. Like, if I leave it there, Uh, there's nothing we can. I'm not even going back up. I was like, you know what? I'm getting nowhere with this bitch. Yeah. (laughs) I I can't. So I went to the front office. I talked to the people at the front office. I was like, listen, he's got food in there. It's up there. It's going to go bad. It's And it was the weekend, too. I was like, it's the weekend. Can he just go up and go get it? So, like, we don't have. And she's like. 
yeah, what's the problem? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, it's a power trip thing. People are on <laughs> mega power trips and 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 places and positions that they shouldn't be. Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I God. saw one guy holding up an entire like. 30 line 30 person line of people trying to leave Walmart because he was Mr. Inspect the Receipts guy. <laughs> With a you know standing there holding people like it was the end of the world if mm-hmm. they didn't if they he didn't go over every single little receipt and people just started mm-hmm. walking by him and he was trying to stop them and they were like no I this is illegal you can't do this. <laughs> You're literally holding me captive. I bought the stuff. I paid for it. I'm leaving. I'm getting the fuck out. I even did your job. I did the checkout. I didn't tip you, even though you asked for one. But. Yeah, it's just the the power trip that people go on. That's something I've always my entire life dealt with, I feel like, because I played all the sports and did all the things growing up. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like the most consistent problem when there when there was a problem was people being on power trips mm-hmm. people getting just an ounce of power and just using it to to wield over other people in a negative horrible way instead of using that power to be like helping people learn how to do things or do things better you're using it to be like huh you got to listen to me i'm, I'm the better boss. than you it's like I need when to know it's like when your parents put the older sibling in in control when they go out oh, or something you know like hated that oh the, you gotta listen to them and then as soon as they leave the the older sibling is just a complete douche nightmare to nightmare like they're you eating have to all listen to me fucking, you have to listen yeah. to me mom said they, they're eating all of the good food and making you eat all the veggies well <laughs> right. i need this because i'm watching you you eat that because i said yeah <laughs> it's that it's that mindset that these people it get is. in when they get these positions of of mm-hmm. Of no power. You don't have power. <laughs> but you think you do. And it it blows my mind. I need to start carrying around a bag of like. Like lollipops or something. So like when these people like start. I'm like oh you're so cute. Here you go. Oh you, you get them. You I've go just started get em. giving people the energy they give me. But I'm giving it back to them tenfold. You know, mm. I'm if you're yeah. a jerk to me, you're getting it back and I'm going to be a bigger jerk. Trust me, if you want to go down that road, I will out jerk you. Wait a second. I will out. <laughs> I will out. Well, I can't even say asshole because that's bad, too. I will be mean. Err. Err than you. <laughs> But that also goes the other way. I can be nice, too, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I'm very respectful of people when I'm out in public. I keep my cart out of the middle of the aisle. <laughs> I <laughs> let people in when they're trying to merge in traffic. Can we talk about that for a second, the traffic zipper effect? How do people not know that? How is the zipper effect not just on the front of every uh, DMV across the world where people go to take the driver's test? And just a giant know. billboard, it should just be the zipper effect being explained to people. Because I don't know. traffic would be almost non-existent if people just learned how to work together on the road and do the zipper effect. If you don't know what the zipper effect is, I'm here to teach you. Okay? <laughs> yeah! The zipper effect. If you're <laughs> trying to get on a road, say you're, you're going straight on the road and somebody's coming in from the, the entrance. Well, it's not an exit ramp, the entrance ramp. Right? Mm -hmm. They're coming onto the highway on the entrance ramp. And there's a line of people there, and there's a line where you are. Every other car should let every other car go. Mm -hmm. You go, I go. 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 I I don't know how we haven't you you get it's greed, right? It's gotta be just greedy people that don't want to let other people in. It's the same or it's either that, that or it's the, it's either that or it's the opposite. It's somebody that's like, oh, you go, go, go ahead. You guys keep going. You, they just hold up the whole line because they yeah. let five people go. <laughs> no, just, just do the zipper effect. <laughs> this isn't one of those things. <laughs> just fucking just drive, drive, just drive. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> for the love. Uh, Demontek in our live chat currently uh, brought up a good point there. He said the tipping nowadays is evolution of the participation trophy. They want a reward for being there. Yes. And that's true. We talked oh about God. tipping last week about how it's out of control. And, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, my God, that makes perfect sense that it's because everybody's like, well, I, I, I'm here. I should get tipped for it. You got to remember that now the people who would be in the, like the CEOs and like our up there management, a lot of them are kids who have gotten participation awards already. I know. I know. That was a whole, there was a whole slew of them out there. You guys got to remember that out there. There's, they're all there. They're all leading. They're all in charge. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. This is what you've done. Mm -hmm. This is your prize. <laughs> Welcome to the U.S. What sucks are the people like me that had no effect on it. That had no, I know. no chance to even. And people are like, we well, you should run for office. No way no. in hell am I running no. for office. Are you kidding no. me? The no. amount of. That sounds like the worst, most miserable life in the world to me. No. I, it was, it's funny because when I was filling out the paperwork for the, for the nonprofit, one of the things that they were talking about is like being a lobbyist, like with your nonprofit organization. And they're like, mm -hmm. they frown upon it and all that. And I was just like, like, what kind of fucking low life do you have to be? To utilize a nonprofit organization. Like, do you guys not realize again, again, that these political figures should not be getting more money <laughs> than they have already? Yeah. But they like, are. They're, they're doing but it. But they are. They are. I how can't. long, chat and live, people in the live chat and people listening, how long until the government steps in and shuts down not so common sense? Because we're, <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing the Lord's work down here, trying to <laughs> spread common sense amongst the people so they can all, we can all work together and we can all take over the world and make it good again because, my God. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say good again because I don't know that it was ever good, but let's, we can it make good it good if we work together. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's, I don't know. That's the moral of this episode is just work together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Work together. We're all one. We're all, all, we're all, we're all one. The same. Uh, out, out jerk the other jerkers, you know? <laughs> and we're, we'll just have one big giant jerk fest. One so. big circle jerk. <laughs> Across the country. Across the Woo! world. I'll be there. First in line. Let's go. <laughs> Now, something interesting, we're talking about the kind of the different generations growing up and, and everything, but something interesting in, in here is that apparently Gen Z, which is the last generation, apparently, we're all dead after this. Uh, <laughs> there's no more letters, guys. <laughs> I think they go to symbols. Batman uh, is we're going back to Batman. Hier hieroglyphics. Uh, but apparently the Gen Z, a lot of them, the majority of them use subtitles when they're watching TV and movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh, I know you saw that. You're the one that put that in there. <laughs> or you told me that about it or something. It's there and I don't get it. <laughs> I did an experiment where I asked. This I did this a couple years ago. I asked this. This experiment is flawed. It it's does not as work. good as any political poll no. you've ever heard. <laughs> well, then that's factual. Statement okay, right there. there we go. <laughs> so it's all bullshit. Give me a trophy. I was there. I did it. I don't got a trophy. I'll just give you a tip. <laughs> but I I had this thing that I started to realize, and I don't know why, but it felt like mostly women used subtitles and men didn't. It's just something that I was I was picking up on, and so I started asking people, men and women, do you use subtitles? Do you do you use subtitles? And a lot of the men said no, and a lot of the women said yes. <laughs> and see, I asked a whole bunch of people, and I got the same response across the board, which was everyone said yes, men and women. So <laughs> right, but apparently Gen Z uses them, and I just I need to know why. I think it has a lot to do with the ADHD aspect of everybody's brains now because, you know, life. 
I think that's the reason is it, it kind of helps to bring them back maybe to looking either that or they're just going deaf. Well, no, <laughs> like my sister is one of them. She uses subtitles on everything. And it's mind you, they're speaking the language that she speaks. <laughs> you know, when people are using these subtitles, they're using them on shows that, that are, have languages that they already know. <laughs> right? <laughs> and she's like, I can't. What well, she told me is like, I can't hear it without the subtitles. I'm like, okay, so you're not, you're not listening to it. You're watching. You're reading, reading? a book. Yeah, that's it's, <laughs> right. That I'm confused. <laughs> Wait, she's what? like, for some reason, it's just like I think for her, it's like if she can't hear it, she can still like see it, so she can read oh, it, she yeah. can still follow it, type of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I think when she <laughs> says I can't hear it without subtitles, she means well, like I okay. can't. Follow I understand. It. Yeah, I understand that completely because it's like. All right, whenever you want go in a car and you have like your, your music blaring and you get to your destination and you have to parallel park, for whatever reason, I put the music down as if that's going too. to <laughs> see. I put, it, I put it down when I get to a stoplight. <laughs> yeah, as if that is going to do something. And I'm like, I think that's what it is. I think it's just our brain is just like, wait, we need to kind of focus a little bit here. I 100% blame my dad for this because he's <laughs> my whole life, every time we pulled into like a parking lot or he's pulled up to a stoplight or something, he always you just subconsciously more. turns down the volume of the radio. I do the same thing. I just <laughs> and I've noticed down. that I do it. I do it as well. I don't know what that's about. That can't just be a me thing or our family thing. Like I think that's a common thing amongst people. You just turn Maybe. the radio down. A lot of people do. Maybe they turn it up because they can't hear it because of the road noise. So when it the road noise goes away, they're like, man, this is loud. Yeah. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Oh, but, yeah. Maybe, Other but I think that, that's, that's the same effect with the whole, you need to see it, like you need to read it in order to like hear it because it's the same thing. Like your brain is processing it in the same kind of way. You know me with sub, I don't even notice that they're there. You have to tell me like every time you tell me like, oh, subtitles in some ridiculous way, you tell me <laughs> and I never know that they're there. I legit don't even realize it. Here's the problem. I can't watch anything with subtitles it's not that i <laughs> don't want to it's, i i really wish i i could, i didn't care about it and i don't care about it <laughs> i just physically my body my brain won't let me watch something if there's subtitles on the screen because i'm just <laughs> reading the subtitles That's maybe it. i am not actually looking at what's happening on the screen even though i can hear them I'm still reading every word. <laughs> Maybe it's because your brain is trying to tell you that it's thirsty for words and it needs to read. And it's like, please pick up a book. You no, fucking idiot. That's not it. It's some kind of focus problem that I have. <laughs> I'm going to go with Brian's talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Brian is what Sky thinks the brain was trying to name itself. Yeah, it's it's the only thing that makes sense, okay? Because the the brain did name itself. Think about that, but that, that's a whole nother story to go down. But the brain did name itself. It didn't tell me how Brian wouldn't be what it was supposed to be. Like, how is that not like it was probably having a dyslexic moment and just like this is what I wrote down and looked at it, it was like. Huh, I guess that works. So the first <laughs> brain was dyslexic. Wouldn't that mean that that was the correct brain and everybody else is dyslexic? Yes. Mm. <laughs> so all Brian's are now brains. <laughs> well, there you go. I know a few Brian's that could probably use a brain. There's... <laughs> Same. <laughs> a lot of people out there, but... This is starting to make more sense. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh... Yeah, subtitles, they, I just, I don't know. I don't know how, what, what do you do about that if somebody needs subtitles and the other person doesn't, like, it, they can't watch with subtitles? If you're a couple, are there any couples out there that one person watches TV with subtitles and one watches without subtitles? How do you compromise on that? Oh, bro, 
I'm glad you brought that up. There was this thing that somebody actually made. It's a pair of glasses. I don't know if it was for movies, but I think they moved it now to this, like what you're talking about. But it's a pair of glasses that people who are hard of hearing um, or can't see like the TV or whatever, it it, it puts the subtitles oh, in yeah, the glasses. Oh, no, I've seen that. You've seen that, right? Yeah, no, they've got it to like, where it can like translate different languages too. So you yeah. can actually talk to people in another language and it translates what they're saying out loud on your glasses in real time. Yeah, which is fucking insane. So like, I could just be phenomenal. wearing glasses and these people think that I'm I'm understanding them. Now I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't be able to talk back though, because I wouldn't know their language. <laughs> you just thumbs up, thumbs down is all you need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the shrug, you know? Just, yeah. oh. <laughs> I'm just here, man. Give me a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna start every place I go to. Guys, I made it to the store. Where's my trophy? Yeah. I need my trophy. Just walk in, walk up to the customer service desk and be like, Oh yeah, I'm just here for my trophy. Like, you have my trophy? Like, yeah, I, I, I just you. got in I just got here. Yeah. The trophy. They're don't like, like don't I get a trophy? I, I I was coming to do my groceries and that's that's trophy. Did you win something? <laughs> well trophy? a trophy, I think. Yeah. Trophy, yeah. <laughs> because I'm doing a, a, a a basic human thing. Yeah. <laughs> everybody go follow us on all of our socials. We appreciate everybody <laughs> being here. You guys have been incredible in the live chat. And if you're listening to us driving down the road, I know I'm saying this late, but look out, there's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> that has been our episode, season three, episode 15 in the that books. Fast. It happens so fast. And oh my God. we look forward to seeing you guys every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're available on Facebook, TikTok, Discord, Twitch, Twitter, X, whatever Instagram. it's called, Instagram, it's all of the things. All the things. Uh, so if you want to reach out to us, but I definitely encourage you guys to follow our Facebook and our TikTok because that's where a lot of our content is going to be posted. And we mm -hmm. are going to be putting out some more content that is exclusive and not uh, going to be on our, our podcast. Also to, podcast. also to all the people who have been uh following us and supporting us on youtube you guys have been awesome like i've been watching that the, our numbers have been growing which i i don't know <laughs> like, oh, that's amazing no we're, yeah. i'm really blown away by the amount of support we've been getting it's incredible yeah. it feels so good to be back and i hope this just goes on forever and ever and ever and ever Oh, you're going to be stuck with me forever. I know. Well, <laughs> tune in next week, everybody, when we will finally get to conspiracies, I believe. And uh, we, got a, we got a doozy for you, let me tell you. You're going to love yeah, it. Yeah, this one's and, a good one. I know. And is there anything I'm missing before we head out? Um, no, I don't know. I don't think so, no. I think we're good. All right. For one. Well, we will see everybody <laughs> Next Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern live. Uh, it'll be available. The, the audio podcast will be available um, Monday night, later that night, or early Tuesday morning for your commute to work. So thank you, guys. And one thing to always remember, read, read the, the room. room.